Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's your boy Motivated Carter coming to you with a new Motivation Live. So today, Motivation Live, I'll be doing it with Naked and Afraid Survivalist and contestant Mono Toygo. If you excuse me for a moment, I'm going to invite it right now. One second, sending an invite right now. bro appreciate you bro how you been oh there she is there we go see if i can get her to join all right there we go i sent the end Good well, morning, everyone. It goes okay. for you. <laughs> how, you, how are you? Very, very well. Um, how right here. Everyone who's watching, watching this, I really do appreciate, and I appreciate you for joining in with you to talk about motivation. Right. I'm glad. I am so glad you are here and. For those of you who don't know, she is from, she's tapping in from the West Coast, so it's morning for her and afternoon for me. Ah, oh, well, good afternoon for those who are in the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for anyone who's going to see it, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. For anyone who's going to see it now, later, or in the future. That's wonderful, wonderful. And, like, make sure I get everybody addressed. Thank you. <laughs> I know we spoke a little bit yesterday. And yes. um, I want to bring up this question again because you said no one had really asked you this before. And it was <laughs> like what started you doing these motivational talks? See, because I went through so much trial and tribulations growing up. I just realized that at the end of the day, you can't always rely on somebody else to give it to you. So the only person you can give it to is yourself. So I just said, let me start my motivation journey, giving myself motivated because I know whatever I'm going through right now, it can't last forever. It, it may, and also, there's something my dad used to always say that it's never too late to make a good, uh, never too late to have a good day. He, he said that I don't care if it's about to be 11.59 going on 12 a.m. to the next day. You can tell yourself, you know what, whatever happened just this moment ago, we're going to let that slide. What happened uh, 23 hours ago, we're going to let it go. Today, I'm going to have a good day. And then when somebody comes to me 30 seconds later, hey, how's your day going? I have a good day because I forgot all about what just happened. And uh, that, and for me, what started my motivational journey was that I just want I just want to be that person that people can come talk to because I don't, because I know this day and age, you don't like to speak because they're afraid of being judged and be judged or being made fun of. So I say so me, I know personally saying I I went through that myself. So my motivational journey just started with just wanting to help others out because I love helping others. Learned that from helping my mom and my family. And then just just I just spread out and give everybody a piece of piece of me because you never know who might need it. I also believe that comes from people who feel that they can't contribute or be uh someone that people can approach for advice right. or for that connection. I, I believe it comes from the beliefs, their own beliefs. And, yes. and 
I think everyone should understand that our beliefs, you know, the, the things that we believe in all came from childhood because at childhood mm -hmm. we're told we need to do this, we need to do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. And so it is embedded in us. So as we grow older, it's hard to let go of those beliefs. Um, when we are adults, we need to reassess them and tap into the subconscious, bring it to the conscious thought so that we can navigate through our adversities and those challenges yeah. we face. And then, of course, create new beliefs that we can come through it. And you also said, too, is, um, you know, with those beliefs, it's from the past. Mm -hmm. And we tend to hold on to the past with almighty because we feel um, taken advantage of or we've gone through some horrible situations. Uh, we've gone through trauma, pain, all of that. And it's definitely so, so much hard work on ourselves to let go and let go. And we can't say, oh, you need to let that go and move on, pull your, you know, pull your boots on and keep on trooping. It doesn't work like that. It is a gradual process. And for each and every individual, it's going to be different. It's going to be. And also with those experiences, what I experienced, could be this, this, and this. It's oh, horrible, some very horrible traumatic experiences. But that compared to your experience, our own experiences are our own. Yes. So anyone who is facing um, challenges, hard times, adversity, uh, you know, things like that, that really deeply hurt them, uh, yes. it is pure to them it is their trauma and people like you and me mm -hmm. can to help them to give them the strength and the courage to continue to move on forward right and help in any way possible just being beautiful human beings yeah I, I totally agree with you because my point of view is that I don't like to, when it comes to like, you know, going through bad things like trauma and stuff, I don't like to, I don't like to play, okay, who went through worse, who went through worse, like, everybody's going to do something. I like to say this, that whenever I, whenever I post my stuff and like, I be transparent, it's not because I want, I'm asking for sympathy or I'm asking for you to like me more because I want to do it. What I'm posting is that, yes, I'm a human. I don't, I won't always, I won't always have good days. I won't always have, you know, okay days. I won't always have uh, bad days. That's why I post, you know, that's why I'm super transparent because I want people to know that, yes, I've been rejected from this, that, and that, but I found somewhere that was willing to take me so I can just start over again and bring myself up. And for those, and for those who reject me, I thank them as well because now you basically show me, hey, you're not always going to get what you want on the first try. But if you keep trying, eventually somebody's going to gravitate towards you. And as and me, as a 25-year-old, and I have so many doors shut in my face, I'm being, I'm being told, okay, you know what? This is part of being alive. You're going to have so many doors shut in your face before that one door opens and says, we will take you because those doors shutting for you is not, it means that it's not for you. But this one opening for you is, this is for you because we want you. We, we know that you're going to be help, you're going to help us some shape or fashion because we're going to help you some shape or fashion. And that's why I post what I post. And that's why I made clear that, that okay, I've been through stuff because I'm just as human as everyone else. I'm not perfect. I think when people are having doors shut on them, don't see it as a negative right. because the door shuts. Sooner or later, another door is going to open. And I, you know, especially when I'm with the kids, right, because life, they're going to be facing some very difficult life challenges, especially this young generation now. And I 
believe that they're not entirely prepared to face these challenges and what they you know no oh, times are really 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 testing us right and um and you know i think we're all it's still in the mentality that we need to you know do this do this you know finish school get college get a good job make the money get the house yeah. get the car the, the list goes on and on and on and it's an unnecessary pressure mm -hmm. because it is all planned in the future no one knows what the future is going to provide none of us do including for myself Mm -hmm. idea a dream and a goal don't let go of that by any means but in a snap of a finger things can certainly change simply by a door opening for an opportunity yeah. and kids is like whenever that door opens it doesn't matter where you are right now open it see what that opportunity can take you and if it's a bad one then well don't regret it yeah <laughs> a new experience and perhaps it is something that you can take valuable um lessons from you have learned perhaps a new skill a new understanding in that environment it, it's so broad but it is the basis on everything we do in life everything and we live too much in the past and into the future and we're not thinking about the now who are we now how do we feel now and there's a very interesting thing about feelings feelings are a very strong um it's a strong thing that we feel and if we're not careful with those feelings of course that comes with the thoughts right then um it, it's going to upset your vibrations so yes. you, you know start creating the good feelings therefore creating the good vibrations around ourselves great we all have shit days coming yeah. <laughs> you know all the time mm -hmm. all the but we do have the power how to change that now right. and you know we may not have the choice as to what happens to us now but we do have the choice as to what we do next yes and I wholeheartedly agree with you because when you mentioned, you know, society is emphasizing, get a good job, go to school, go do this, go do that, like have basically setting your future for up for you already. Yes. I can tell you, I can tell you, based, I can tell you, growing up, that's all you heard was get a good job, go to school, and I, and me, I have my degree, I've got, I have two jobs, I have, a, I'm in the military for the next month and a half before I get out, and then I have a new job that I'm starting today, and I can say that. You don't have to exactly just, you know, do the X, Y, and Z. Like, yes, college degree is good to have on you, but it's not a necessary thing to make yourself successful. As I find out, because I've been, I, I always screw up knowing, thinking, hey, you know what? I need a degree so I can be successful, or I need to be working like this super respectable job to get to be successful. But the deal is, you don't need that. You just need to understand that you might have doors closing your face, but you can make it, you can make something of yourself if you just persevere and don't give up. Mm. And I, I also think too that, um, you know, a lot of expectations are uh, upon people. And then of course we place our own upon ourselves. And we have to be very careful about that because if we've placed high expectations for ourselves i'm going to do this i'm going to achieve this and and when it doesn't work out then we start beating ourselves up right we're not meeting the 
expectations of others, well, we're going to get beaten up as well. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's not a win-win situation. So we, you know, it really comes down to living in the moment, living in the now. And, you know, like I'm 54 yeah. now. 60, here I come. <laughs> so, oh, you're 54. I, I can honestly say my life journey has been one incredibly extraordinary life experience and it has taught me a lot and and also know that um it wasn't until i was in my 40s that i started really figuring things out i started questioning things like what's my true passion now when i first did you know a survival show uh with discovery curiosity back in yeah. 2008 believe it or not i started doing these survival shows in 2008 and that show was called i caveman mm -hmm. and it was just on a whim i was told oh um we sh you shouldn't have interviewed her because she's you know been an actress you know i've been on uh acting on tv shows and whatnot right um, but, um, and I said, yeah, but that's not me being who I really am. I remember saying something along those lines. And so the, the producer and the, the casting director, um, uh, you know, they spoke about it and they said, well, okay, well, so next thing I know, I'm doing this survival show. And if it wasn't for that door opening for me, I don't think I would have found my passion. And, and it was on that show that I just went, oh, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love with this aspect of life, getting back to basics, letting go of materialistic, ideas and and possessions uh, you know that that whole thing i've got to have this i've got to have that got to have that and i was also <clears throat> being somebody that wasn't true i wasn't being true to myself and that was because i hadn't discovered my true passion right and and when that happened, the light bulb went on and I was like, this is it. This is what I'm meant to be doing. This is where I feel most mm -hmm. like me, who I am. And, and it also helped me um, work on my inner child. And by that, I mean, I had... I grew up in the most beautiful place mm -hmm. on a huge sugar cane farm in North Queensland, Australia. And the world was my oyster, as my mother had quoted once. And, um, but for many years, I had pushed that down. You know, where I grew up, how I grew up, and it was like, Oh, I don't want to tell anyone that I grew up in this lifestyle because they're going to judge me, um, you know, like, oh, she's a redneck or she's a hick. <laughs> or, or that. Yeah. Went into the modeling world. You know, I felt like I had to stand up and like, you know, like, oh, oh. But it was all false. It was all fake. And I was just cheating myself. Right. So, so it made me really think back to my childhood and start remembering the good things that it presented to me. It presented to me being free. It presented to me learning about the land, absolutely in love and, and so curious about nature. And even before I understood the whole survival 
aspect is what we understand what survival is these days yes. survival shows so to speak and of course in the military we get trained to do survival um yes. all of that just came into a massive perspective and i thought life is really about survival and right. it is not necessarily wilderness survival it is survival of the mind the body the spirit oh. and and every single one of us is facing that on all different levels um but i can say that through my experiences doing survival shows because uh you are very limited with resources you mm -hmm. are forced to adapt you are forced you, you become extremely creative and you think outside the box it creates a situation where you are requiring to do problem solving thinking of solutions and of course overcoming extreme challenges and environmental challenges right. as well and i i really believe that has made an impact of what i do now in life you know what guy because i cause like i said i don't like not not to sound like oh i'm a i'm a i'm stuck in my brain i i did my research on you because i don't know you run camp mono in uh california i'm assuming yes that's right young yes yes all right just quick plug for you guy i shout out that camp remember to go get there uh you also run another camp where you teach people how to respect the uh, wilderness and survival techniques right yes and i'm also educating on uh wilderness wildlife and uh environmental conservation and protection you know come back in, into our lives because if we continue on the track that we are going towards we are not ourselves and by far we are not helping the generations coming up behind us and you know I've I've actually had kids uh be very upset about today's situation especially when it comes to our environment um especially when it comes to our wilderness just being ripped away from us and um and animals just on the brink of extinction just too many of them the animals that I grew up are no longer here really that you grow up uh, that you know and grow up with are not going to be for our beautiful generations that are coming up we need to start differently and so you know on, on my camp it is really about motivating these children to think different to to well start making different choices and then talk to their parents about mm -hmm. making different choices right. as well <laughs> you know otherwise we're just going to be in a hamster wheel just going going and we're wondering why the world is falling apart around us mm -hmm. everyone seems to be in that little hamster wheel and going like it's all about me it's all about me it's all about me but no it's not yeah. about us everyone we all need to come together even if we're not speaking just in the thoughts in the way we think we need to put out that positive energy throughout the world i can tell right now you're out of my heart you're trying to you're trying to take about the time over here for me huh you got to my heart <laughs> but but i absolutely agree with you because you see while people are focused on the land aspect i'm more focused on uh believe it or not the more the the lakes the rivers and the ocean aspect because i come i come to respect being in the water more because like it's like when you're in there it's like oh my gosh it's like you're free like you see them they're, they're moving they're majestic they're moving it's like they don't have to care about anything because they know they own it and me i want to preserve that that I, I won't say i educate people on it but 
I can tell you that if somebody if somebody was to say, "Hey, what's this swimming around?" I can say, "Oh, that looks like a uh, X, Y, Z." Because I do more research about that. Because I'm pretty sure you heard it saying of we know more about space than we know about our own ocean. So yeah, and I can it's true. It's true because I know more about space than our oceans. But I'm trying to limit that by saying, let me say, I I know this, that, and that. So if I go swimming, I know where I'm about to go into because I know what's in there. I know how to avoid it, and I know how to, you know, deal with it if I have to. And um, I can just say, because you're right, like, you know, you don't want to be stuck in that hamster wheel of trying to figure out, oh, I'm by myself, I'm by myself, when in truth, you're not really by yourself. You just, you don't have to always openly say it out loud. You can just say it out loud by, you know, posting about it. Or just, or just do, or let your actions do more of speaking than your actual uh, mouth, as I kind of learned. And that's that's basically what I learned. Just my, I'm gonna let, let my actions do more of speaking than my actual mouth because I can do this all day, but it ain't gonna mean nothing if you're not following up with your uh, action. That's true. And then also, you know, even if don't ever feel alone. You know, don't ever feel disappointed that, you know, if, uh, like, I'm coming across a situation right now, right? Mm -hmm. For the first time in the seven years that I've been running my business, um, I have been absolutely blessed with my camp being booked out every single week the entire time. Now, I made some changes to my camp this year. And it was bold and it was a risk. But I thought, like, just do it. You've been thinking about this. Just do it, Manu. And I decided to turn um, my uh, survival training weeks into not a three-day camping in the wilderness, but the entire week. Right. And then... And also, that was a result of me trying to, like, I want to put my prices up a little bit. So I want to give it yeah. worth. Um, and, of course, hence, you know, creating these full week-long survival training weeks for kids between the ages of 6 and 15. Uh-huh. Um, and so those weeks aren't filling up as what I would have been, um, what you know, which is what has happened in the past. And then yesterday, yes, uh, um, I just went. You know what? It doesn't matter. Right. If I do just have six or seven kids on those weeks. Well, that is just going to give me an opportunity to give more to them and to be more one-on-one instead of me trying to spread out between a whole bunch of kids. Now I can do just this small group and give them like a, a, a better experience, a better learning environment. And... You know, I hope, I think that's, and that's what I care about. That's what I care about. Of course, it creates like, well, what's the solution to ensure that the, um, I get enough money to (laughs) run a business. And I can tell you, and I'm sure maybe some of your viewers will agree with this, but uh, having your own business uh, doesn't come. I'm cheap, especially here in California. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, start a business in California. Yeah. But it is. And it's where I'm based out of. And, and it's where um, I work from. And, um, and so, solutions, problem solving. Well, I decided since I have two experienced guides with me this year i decided to open up extra spots for the adventure day weeks Mm -hmm. when i did that all of a sudden they're all booked out so like they 
there you go. There you go. It was like a risk taken. It wasn't working. But then I went, mm, doesn't matter. And then I thought, okay, well, what's the solution? I'm facing a problem. What do right. I and, and And then I did that. You know, um, of course, it's going to require me hiring another van uh, and yeah. another van to, to cover the amount of kids. But it, it worked. It worked. So now I'm like really excited that I'm going to be doing these week long survival training camps with these kids, just with a small group of kids or young adults, should I say. And that's good going to give me that that opportunity to give them so much more yes so it's a win-win i feel hey you know what i'm picking back off of that what you did was you took a small you took a small problem that you were having and you turned it to win because you said how can i how can i solve an issue because i know i'm not getting where i want to be at instead of, you know crashing and burning or sitting in the corner feeling sorry for yourself you say you know what I'm going to get some more people. I'm going to extend it. I'm going to raise it up because you got the skill set for it and you raise it up, you extended it, and you took what little you had and you said, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to use this because it's something I've learned that, because this thing, you got people already interested. That's half the battle. You got some people, you got what? Six people, you said? Six. Six? Yes. So that there, there's the other half. You got six people. You got people interested. Boom. Now you ask one hundred percent. You took that. You took that, and now look what happened. Now you're all booked up because you took that risk. Because you didn't. You said I'm gonna start with these people, and I'm gonna take this interest, and I'm gonna make it all into a giant win. You want? You may have lost a battle when you when you when you started, but now look who's winning. You got. Yeah, you know, you're booked up, and yeah. that is that is nothing short of inspiring. I can tell you that. Yeah. Like I. So it's, and and you know. Um, how all this uh, came about, um, it wasn't purely just on my own, my own doing. It actually required me to uh, sit in on another motivational talk about prosperity and what that means and feelings and vibrations, right? All right. And so before, before that event, um, Zoom, Zoom event, um, yeah. I was like, just like, oh my God, what, what do I do? What do I do? And then I had, I was starting to, you know, feel all this bad energy and the vibrations were, you know, low. And it was yeah. all doing was creating anxiety and 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 disappointment and go like what did i do wrong you know that kind of thing oh yeah and um and as soon as i recognized that with some help through a, a amazing lady called nancy mueller um yeah. he's been my life and motivational coach now for about 15 years and um you know, all, all it takes is just certain words, words that you say, yes, that I say, or even words that we hear from someone else that can turn things around in a second, and then you are able to let it go, be back present, and continue to move forward with a better vibration i wholeheartedly agree with you on that one because like when you asked me about my motivational journey i didn't start taking it very very seriously until i say 2019 because 2014 i started doing it but it was it was like here and there then i started getting a little more serious when i was in boot camp because i had friends i had recruits coming to me they was talking about you know whenever you speak to us like you just turn you can just turn a bad day into good because you just have that ability to make you, 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 I don't know what it's called, but you can just make somebody feel better just by speaking to them. Yeah. And you just get that leadership quality. And then 2019, my uh, gunnery sergeant, he called me Motivated Carter. And I thought I was running away from 
speaking uh, about being motivational speaking, but it turns out it was actually me running towards something right. And, I, and if I keep going, I'm going to keep making it. And then I changed my suit to motivated car because my gunny called me that. And I asked him, I asked him a year ago, why did you call? I asked him a year ago, why did you call me? He told me that you just one of those young Marines that actually can make cash make things a lot better just from being there. I've seen people's reactions towards you. I've seen the SEALs reaction towards you. I've seen people reacting towards you. And I know that you that you're just motivational. It's just now I want you to see it. That's why I call you. That's why I call you. That. That's why I hype you up. That's why I tell people about what you're doing. That's why I tell people what that's why I hype, that's why I say these things about you. Because I know I know you're capable of doing much, much better than what you are. I just want you to see it. And that's why I projected for it and I started doing the motivational content. I call myself motivational motivated car. And now everyone else calls me that. And I can say you're you're very right about persevering and just you know the right words can get you in the direction you need to. Exactly. Yeah. Totally true. Um, you, you know, like I think we touched on something yesterday when we 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 did a a, a talk, and um, it was about people feeling like they're on their own or feel right. that only they, you know, I, only I can do this. I have to do this on my own. No, you don't. Right. You know, we're, us meant to do that. We are meant to help each other, lift each other up um, and to help us uh, drive other forward into yeah. what well what our destinations are everyone has a destination whether or not they recognize it now or whether or not they recognize it 15 20 years it's just like i had no idea where my destination is but i i'm Pretty darn happy. Mm -hmm. You're just 25, and you have already discovered your destination, your truth, right. what motivates you, your destiny. Oh, you said with low base on destiny. Ah, what? Now, see again. See, this is a question I've never been asked because I don't ever really think about the answer, but. I get to say what motivates me to keep doing it is because I really wouldn't have thought when I messaged you that, okay, I, we we doing this right now. I thought, okay, I just sent a message. I want her to know that I watched the show. I really appreciate what she did for that because before I answer the question, when you when you approached your first partner and you made it clear, we're going to do this together, I was like, okay, already established that we're a team. We're going to do this together. We're not going to fight. We're not going to fuss. We're going to work together because it's going to be hard. But we don't need to make it harder by having a war with each other. Where we're, it's man against nature, and not man against man. That's what established me to say, okay, she's already knowing what she's doing. Yeah. And then when you talk to, uh, I cannot remember her, her name. Uh, when you talk to her, when, when she was having her struggles, I uh, okay, she's definitely a leader because instead of you know giving up on her like other two might have, you was like, all right, let me let me just chit chat with you, and let me just tell you, let me just see what's going on, and you figure it out. She came out of a shell and started working as a team. She still had her struggles, but eventually you all made out of there together. And that's what made that's what gravitated me towards you. So what gravitates me to doing what I do is just because I I know that somebody is going to get the message at some point. I I know I can't reach everyone. I can't save the world, but I know that I know that what I'm doing is that I can at least reach out to those who might who might have me who might have been waiting for somebody like me to come in and say, Hey, you got this. You're gonna go through the lot, but if you just keep pushing forward, like, yes, people are gonna be in your ear talking about you, they're gonna look down at you, they're gonna give you the evil eye. But if you just ignore it, like as I always say, play on a little football, kick it through the field goal, that's your field goal of the of a bright future, a field goal of you doing good things, all because you decided to ignore them. And that's why I do it, because I want people to know that you don't always you don't always have to be what people say you are. You don't have to you don't have to be a, a loser. You don't have to be a uh, terrible person. You don't have to be somebody that 
They say you are. You be whoever you want to be because you say you're going to be it, not because someone said it. And that's how I live my life. I say I'm going to do this, and, I, and I've done it so far, despite what a lot of people have said against me. <laughs> I, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, you should be doing this. You should. Why are you doing that? And this is like, well, it's my life, my decision, my choices, and I will learn from that. And you do, as we all know, we all do learn from our mistakes. Um, but I don't call them mistakes. I call them learning curves. Yes. Yes. Like, well, well, that didn't work. So what can I do that is going to work? You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. well, isn't that overcoming obstacles in life? Right. You know? And, and it is, um, and it requires a lot. It, it doesn't necessarily require a physical um, thing. It requires the mind. I, I think people understand how incredible and how strong our minds are. And I know that yesterday is just like, what gets us through? very difficult times well it is our mind it's not necessarily the body and um and if the mind is strong to get through it the body will follow it's yes of that actually um so when i did the the first season of naked and afraid when i was in the jungle i was bit by a mosquito mm -hmm. I was uh carrying um hemorrhagic dengue fever it's not it's the king of the dengues and it has uh, uh like an 80 percent or more um um mobility meaning about 80 percent or more people actually died from that particular uh virus and um and oh boy so not knowing about it, not, I remember seeing that mosquito on my arm too, by the way, because it wasn't the typical mosquitoes that have been yeah. all the time, but it happened towards the end. But the city started coming, but because of the fact that I'd already been in the jungle for what, 17, 16, 17 days, well, I couldn't recognize the symptoms as a result and um and in my mind just, just like my gosh i'm i can't eat i i'm just thirsty I have headaches i feel weak i'm feeling pain and all of this but i just oh my goodness was i gonna give up no but i was sick and i still never gave up because in my mind i'm going like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna get through this so it was a talk, like, you can do it, you can do it, push through, push through. And then it wasn't until I got back here to the U.S., landed back in uh, the U.S., that it was recognized as, like, something's seriously wrong because, you know, I started uh, gum bleeds, nose bleeds, and I was getting eye droplets mm -hmm. um, in the eyes and bleeding out of my butt <laughs> as well you know and then all I'm going I was like oh wow you know what's really going on here and um and then of course I ended up in ICU for a week and hospital for another well you know two weeks total and then yeah. and then it was just like oh shit um this is it I really, really thought that I was going to die. The doctors thought I, that I wasn't going to make it. Uh, but I remember feeling uh, completely paralyzed, um, hopeless, hopeless. Yeah. And but in my, my mind was still thinking through all the pain, right? The mind yeah. was still so damn strong. I was like, don't you dare die you cannot give up i want to live yes 
and and I managed to do it. Um, but it took a year after all of that for me to get the strength up to be able to walk again, to have the strength to to lift and and do things. And I thought, well, this is it. My life's over. It all got taken away from me. But through perseverance in the mind, using my mind to say, you can do this. Just take it one day at a time. There are going to be setbacks. There were many setbacks for me, but I still never gave up. And I and that is so important for people to hold on to. Just have hope. And don't don't give up so easily. Just get through it. And there are people like you and me to help you get through it. Yeah. And I am really glad that you managed to overcome it. And I don't know, but sir. Off he goes. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed uh, this talk. That was my dad. He was like, you know, he's, he's cooking. It's Memorial Day coming up, so he's about to cook some for uh, on Memorial Day. I can't wait. Oh, wonderful. What are you having? Oh, well, he said he's going to get some uh, ribs, some links, and some patties. And I think he's I think he's bringing steak with it, but um, he doesn't never tell me. So that's, I'm hoping he got it. But that's a yeah, as I was gonna say, it was um, I am glad you survived. Dang, you said dengue. Uh, is, that, is that what it's called? Hemorrhagic dengue. 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 Oh, I, I have it up. Hemorrhagic dengue fever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can remember that. Yeah, it's um mainly uh, it is around the uh, the tropics, around the equator region. Wow. Far worse than malaria or. Um, the West Nile or, or things like that. But um, basically what hemorrhagic means, what that did is dissolve all of the myelin sheath that covers your blood vessel and nerves and like that. Um, so a nickname for it actually is called um, um, uh, bone crush, bone crush virus. I heard that one. Now that, that made more yeah. sense. Because that's exactly what it's being wow. um, rolled over by a steamroller. Oof, I can't imagine that thing. Oh, my goodness. And I thought having knee surgeries was painful. Mm. Oh, nothing tops this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I could imagine may top it, but it's for a short time as that and that is on yeah. childbirth which you know sadly i i haven't experienced I um but that is one little regret that i have but at the same time i have fulfilled you know that that mother nurturing thing inside of me and giving all of that in the most profound way to the kids that I work with these days. Like I said, there you go again. You took, you took some, oh, hi, Willie. You took once, you took a, uh, you took one pain and you turned it into something good. You, you, you couldn't be a mother to your own kid because you haven't had an experience yet, but you could be a mother slash nurturing figure to other people who may have, who may have mothers or who may not have mothers. And, you took you took one small you took one loss and turned it into a giant victory and yeah, that's, that's why I, and that's 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 why I uh, highly respect you and look up to you because you take obviously I read your story you do, you take a lot of defeats and you turn them into victories like I read up that you you, went, you were homeless for a whole year uh, mm -hmm. yes yeah <laughs> read on that but like I like I said I done my research and I know you got in the military because. You, because you said you had knee surgery, so knee pain yeah. got, or knee, uh, you got to, uh, not kicked out, but you had to leave for that reason. Yeah. And yes, and that introduced, um, you know, something traumatic in my life as well, you know, because, uh, you know, I came from a sugarcane farm in the mm -hmm. rural part of Australia. 
So that doesn't give you exposure to the real world. Right. And of course, uh, I, I didn't have that life experience and I was extremely naive about the real world and what's out there and all the abilities. You know, like I had no idea that there were so many possibilities in life. Right. And, and, and then I, you know, so at 17, to get off the farm. Otherwise, you know, as a girl, it's not much of a future for girls, mm -hmm. you know, other than getting married and having babies and probably being miserable, just like my mother. And, and that is what I was terrified of. It was becoming my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother was... A uh, very violent, brutal mm. woman uh, towards us. So that's that's you know when I said I had shame and and I didn't really want to acknowledge that it was because I was carrying the pain of my childhood and not not seeing the great things about my childhood, right? Mm. So going into the military at age 17, I went from this small box to a slightly bigger box. Right. And not being given the exposure of the real world and the opportunities. And I, I didn't know who I was. I hadn't really discovered who I was. Yeah. Who am I? Let's start asking ourselves, you know, those who are watching, let's start asking yourself, who am I? Right. Why am I here? And what's my purpose? I think they are key questions to ask yourself. Otherwise, you are going to end up in the hamster wheel going like, well, what am I doing? You know, is this really what I want to do? And then you live in a life of like, I'm so unhappy. I want this. I want to be like them. And this is where social media can be mm, not so good, especially for our youths, because yeah. you know, it's, um, it's making those younger generations feel inadequate in a way. Yeah. Trying to be someone else that they're not because they're trying to live up to something that they believe is where they need to be and this is the way I need to be and how I look and how I dress and how I behave you know right. all of that and it's it's not your journey you have to find your own journey and that can only be found if you ask yourself those questions right and I wholeheartedly agree because I, cause I used to be that kid. I won't like, be, I won't be like this person. Like, look at, look at this person. He's got jewelry, get, live nice and all. But I was like, but that, being in the military has taught me that I don't have like stop looking at what other people are. Just focus on yourself. Focus on where you want to be. Focus on who you want to be. And I can say wholeheartedly, I was real glad that I, that I, did, I stopped looking at other people to tell me what I should and shouldn't be. Let me just focus on what I want to be. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I look at others for inspiration because I know eventually others are gonna look to me for inspiration, mm. and that's why that's why I do what I do. And um, touch base with you about what you said earlier was like, uh, I'm not gonna take uh, failures as losses. I'm taking them as learning curves. As my friend Alex once told me, she says that don't take failures for as a failure. Just take it as additional preparation. You know, like, so if you want to try again, absolutely, You're gonna learn yeah. from it. You know, yeah. it's, um, you know, how I, I ended up homeless, and this is me being very um, open, so I, I hope I don't um, uh, uh, offend anyone, uh, but this is the, the, the truth of, you know, how I ended up there. Um, you know, I, I was attacked, and... Uh, raped viciously in in uh, in uh, Seattle <clears throat> because I was naive and I 
trusted the wrong person. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he took everything from me. And um, because then, you know, I had, um, well, when, he, when I say took everything from me, well, my whole life was in my backpack when this event took place. Mm. And that included money, wallet, cards, passport, <laughs> ID, you know, all of those things that are very, very important to us in order to, you know, get around and whatnot. And, um, and I couldn't even get into a shelter. So that's, I was like, well, oh, because I didn't have that. And I was a, um, uh, well, I wasn't from America at that time. I was still an Australian citizen. Uh, so those doors shut down for me and I ended up living on the street. But I became very creative and, and I ended up finding myself like this most awesome nook that kept me safe. I wouldn't say kept me warm, but, you know, but yeah. I did what I had to do at that, at that time. And, um, and a lot of people go like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I was like, no, don't be sorry, because what it did was it, like, I see it now that it was the most extraordinary experience of my life, regardless of not how I got there, right? It taught yeah. something and it made me a stronger person. So that, you know, and even with everything that we do, the, the, the hardest things, the difficulties, the challenges, the obstacles, they are there for you to grow yeah. and the more of it comes to you don't take it as a take it as a positive because it is making you stronger for what's going to happen next and take those and take those uh obstacles and use them as your foundation for your empire of your life yes it's your life you right. have to and you know oh harley i agree with you because last year I was, we was, uh, we did a military training in 29 pounds in desert. And I learned a lot about myself out there because I didn't think I, I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is going to be really, 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 really hot. And we got gear on, it's hot. It's going to be even hotter than what I am. But it was that, it was doing those two weeks. I learned a lot about my, I learned a lot about myself. One, I learned I can survive in the desert. Two, I, I can, I actually, I actually can kill a snake now. Like, I'm not afraid to fight a poison snake now, even, even though, at first, it was like, oh, my gosh, this thing is right here. It keeps coming to me. And I just stumbled on it. Okay, I got it. Now I can do that. And I just learned a whole lot about myself. And that's – and I, I didn't take that as – people were like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I go out there. No, don't be sorry. It, actually, I'm glad I'm out there because it's going to suck, of course. It's, going, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be super fun, but it's going to be what I need to make myself better because who knows if one day I might be in the desert. Now I got. I know how to keep my head on. I know how to keep my head on straight. I know how to keep my goals in line. I know how much water I need to drink. I know when I need to stop. And I also know that if I can, if I can, I can help out other people when they're uh, feeling like they're about to go down too. Because mm -hmm. that, all that taught, all that taught me so much. It it does. You know, spend, those kinds of experiences do teach you a lot, and I. You know, there's part of me that says, I think everyone, I'm not saying everyone, but, you know, those. Um, but the other thing, too, is that these kinds of experiences, your experience in the desert and uh, experiences I've had, do take you out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. training takes you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I think... Um, that's being ignored a little bit and that it's being ignored a little bit because we're so accustomed to having all the nice things around us, a nice bed, all the pillows, the blankets, mm -hmm. the food, the water, you know, everything, everything's so available. And, and, 
you know, and of course now everyone has a gardener. Well, maybe I'm just talking about LA, but everyone has a gardener. I have an animal garden. Everyone has a, a nanny. Everyone, now, now, you know, now everyone has a, a food delivery where people go shopping for you. Right. It's like, oh my God. Why are people becoming so dependent on others to provide you the basic things? If we don't understand how important and how valuable it is to be self-sufficient and self-reliant, as you get older, you go like, let's say shit hits the fan. Well, who's right. going to they're not because they're going to like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to lead that in now to the fact that just recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, right. I took a massive, massive risk and I bought property uh -huh. for acres of property. Property. And the reason for that is because is because I um, I have this in mind. Like people need help. People need to uh, start get putting their hands back into the dirt and understanding, um, you know, self, being self sufficient and self reliant and uh, putting in a little bit of hard work. But right. um, the experience of that type of learning and um, just it's it's going to be building self strength and confidence and awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So look what happened when the pandemic happens. It's like, oh, right. God, if this is happening through a pandemic, can you imagine if we really faced a crucial Disaster? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. We are in trouble. And I think that because we, uh, the you know, certain generations have become like, well, they can all do it for me. I don't have to do it. Very I don't, oh, I don't need to know how to do that. Someone else does it. Learn to change the goddamn tire on your car. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. No, you're no, you're absolutely right. They the little things like that, like before military, I didn't know how to change tire. Now I can now I can do it on my car if I have to. Uh, me, like I'm like I, like I said, I mean my training has been some of the highest places to some of the coldest, and the coldest places I was extremely grateful for because now I didn't I didn't think okay hey I gotta chop firewood now I'm chopping firewood like I like I'm a, a logger I I can chop firewood really well. I know how to put, I know how to start a fire. I know how to keep it going for a long time. I know, okay, if I have a tent set up, throw snow on top of it because it'll keep the cold out and it'll trap the heat on the inside. Yeah. yeah I, I, like, it's just like the primitive things that I would never have known about because if I didn't say, uh, if I, if I would have been the person to say, nah, I don't want to do this because this guy knows it's going to suck. And I probably wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be saying, hey, I, I know all this now. Mm -hmm. And me, me being in the desert, uh, we're sleeping out there on, I'm sleeping, on, I'm sleeping uncomfortably most of the time, but I learned to come, I grow accustomed to it. And I'm like, hey, you know what? This is how people before me, before we had trucks, before we had all of this on, we're sleeping. Let me sleep like them. Let me sleep on the ground like a caveman. Use rock and a pillow. And yeah. I'm comfortable with it. I think, you know, like when we are facing these uh, uncomfortable situations, you know, difficult, you know, like tasks or things like that, you go like, well, shoot. It's like you think we have it hard? Yeah. yeah. Think about, you know, five hundred thousand years ago, in in how difficult their life must have. Been. Yes. So, we're sitting pretty as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. People are still so dissatisfied, and we need to change that 
thinking. If we are feeling uncomfortable or dissatisfied, it's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so sad, I can't get this or do that. Well, um, or I'm going through this, right? Think about the people, our ancestors in the mm -hmm. past and how it might have been for them. Right. And try to think how they overcome situations. How did they get through? I'll tell you how, because they all worked together as a community. Yes. There was no crime. There was no, there was, there was no personal property. There was no crime. There was no all that stuff. They're way past that. It was all about we're here now. We got to work together. If we, if we want to, if we want to survive, we want to live. We got to work together. We got to have somebody who can be a leader. We got somebody who knows how to do this. We got somebody who knows to do that. And they, they had roles. They had, they had leaders. They had, you know, ways that we get things done. Mm. And very true. And that's how, and that's how I, that's how I'm living. Like, okay, when we're going outside, when we're out there in the field, it sucks sometimes because we got weather to deal with. We got animals, we got insects to deal with. We got all kinds of things out there that can happen at any moment. Yeah. So get comfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I said, you know that wildfire story I told you about? Yes. Like, I, uh, well, not wildfire, but forest fire. I never knew, I didn't ever think in a million years I'd be in the middle of one. But when it happens, it's like, oh my gosh, this is really happening. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Then I hear I am. I'm moving faster. Everybody's working together. Like, it's no more, oh, I'm a sergeant. Oh, I'm a captain. I'm this rank. I'm that rank. It's, we're all working together now because if we want to get out of here and not have no, Casualties, we gotta work together, and we move fast. And we got it, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm looking back, I'm like, that is really just come out of that. I smell like I smell like charred uh, chicken right now, but I'm alive, and I can't. I went through it. I went through it two more times. We know what to do. We got it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, now I can add that to my resume. Well, I, it'll be a good story to tell somebody in, in a bar one day. Yeah, I was in a little forest fire. We got out of there real quick. You do know that, you know, those kinds of experiences, um, you know, especially the one that you just had. Um, I, I, I really think that um, certain people who, well, what's the good way to describe this? You had leadership. Mm -hmm out of you you, you know it's, it's like um you know with i hope that sometime soon that i'll be able to start with corporations or, or businesses to incorporate survival training within their within their companies and and the reason for doing that so many reasons but what i'm trying to touch on was that if you have we always have the boss, the major, the captain, yeah. the lieutenant, you know, and, and so on, the ranks. And that mm -hmm. is corporate, corporate worlds, business worlds, right? You have the head botch and it all trickles down to the, um, the, the bottom person, yeah. which is a terrible thing, a terrible thing. But when, when you are placed in an environment that requires group thinking and working together as a group, what's, what it does, it allows those down here like to immerse into roles that management higher ups had not recognized before. And you're very correct, because my last CEO and the current one we have, they're more of a, we're going to get y'all very uncomfortable, but it's for a good reason, because what if some what if shit hits a fan? What if somebody shoots a bomb at us? Now we're going to make sure that you're ready for it. And I think my last CEO before, because if he wasn't so hard on us in our training, I, I doubt that we probably would have got out of there in one piece, our current one. He's making us do things that we normally don't do, and I'm thankful for him now because I didn't think that I was. I, I, last time I worked with Night Vision was while I was training. That was almost five years ago. Right. Now I'm doing it again, and I'm re, I'm re upping on something, and he's doing it with us. 
I'm like, okay, now you got people who normally don't be doing, who don't normally get recognized, recognized. Yeah. And that's and for I'm grateful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, wow. This is probably the longest I've ever done in live. Usually it's under an hour, but when I'm, but you, like some, like my dad said, when you're really enjoying somebody's company and you're really enjoying it, you don't really realize how much time is going by. No, no. A, a good example is, um, I know this is going back in history, but this right. is a profound example. Uh, Sigmund Freud, I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Carl Jung. And when they, when those two men, you know, met, you know, they're, they're both psychotherapists and everything like that. Yeah. And you all know that one of them had, had one view and the other one had another view, not to go into details. Uh -huh. But the, those two minds alike, when they connected together, they talked and discussed and evaluated um, uh, everything over a period of three days non-stop and wow. like and what evolved out of it. it it what evolved out of it was an understanding of why Sigmund Freud believes that his psychotherapy is based on this and mm -hmm. Carl psychotherapy therapy is based on this so um yeah i think when you are in tune with another like person it doesn't matter you can never cut that conversation short <laughs> or through that you are bound to learn something from each other I've definitely learned something from. I definitely learned a lot from you because, like I said, when I, when I watched that shit, when I watched Naked and Afraid, and I saw it and heard that speech, I, that's what made me say, "All right, let me." That's why I got off off my pity my pity party and I said, "All right, let me go back. Let me go back to the drawing board and do this, do that." And I can say wholeheartedly because I watched it and because of what you said. And if you didn't think ten years later you would hear me telling you that now I'm working, now I'm about, now I'm gonna start my job today because of that. And like that's so Harley, I oh Harley, I, I have you to thank for it because if you didn't if you weren't such a leader in that in that show, I probably wouldn't have even uh resonated so heavily with me. And um I can say, you know, you've been through a lot in your life and I haven't I'm not too much different from you because we both went through so much and we both found our passions for uh what we do now. Yeah. And I guess yeah, I really truly appreciate you and what you've been and what you've been doing. And that passion has become the purpose, right? So now, now, now I it's just like I know what my purpose is. And um, for a lot of people, that's the hardest thing. Yeah. That's the to find. Um, and all I say is just like just open up, let go of certain things, and just take risks. Right. You know, out of your comfort. And just take that risk. And if it's the wrong step, well, you're going to learn something from it, but you right. you're not going to lose. It's like me mm -hmm. to getting in, you know, getting into my own business. Before starting my own business, I was working for an adventure company, and um, me, it's just like, oh God, I can do this so much better. Not saying that they were doing it wrong all it meant was it started sparking something in my mind going like oh man i can do this so much better and that that continued to me stepping into creating my own business and it was scary as shit because i was scared of letting go of the security that i had yeah. And and the network that I had, because I knew if I stepped out, it's all on me. I have to start from scratch. But I did it. I did it. And look where I am. You know, I'm 
still doing it. And I just love what I do. And if you have found your passion, you know what your purpose is. And when you've achieved that, then you're going to be in love right. your life. I'm not saying we're going to be happy, 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 happy. We're still going to be faced with challenges. Right. But at least we are doing something that we love to do. I agree. And I love doing motivation. And I love doing these lives. I love just being my. I love being me at this point. Like not to my own horns. Like every time I look, every time I look back at all I went through and look at myself now, I always say every time I look in the mirror and I before I brush my teeth, I say, I love being me. I love where I come from. I love who I used to. Uh, I, I love who I used to be too. Because if I wasn't that person that who went through so much, I wouldn't be as strong as I am today. So I just say, I love being me. Agree. You have just copied the same words that I would have said as well. I guess I, learned a little something. I, guess I picked up some good habits from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I picked up a lot of good habits from you, so that's why I wanted to show you. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So, um, is there anything more that we should be sharing with your viewers? Well, there was one question I wanted to ask you. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't have to answer if, you, if it's uh, too deep, but I wanted to ask about, uh, how's your, how, your brother, I know he had jaw cancer. Is he doing much better now? Or, you know, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. Trust me. Like, it's no, I won't force no. you. No. No. Um, wow. So <clears throat> my brother and I um, box. If you put us side by side, I'm yeah. the female and he's the male version. And uh, there, is, there is something very unique about us two. Um, you know, so I, I just, I just want to let everyone know that I just absolutely love and cherish him so much okay uh but the um the jaw that resulted in removing all of the, the the main jaw part you know mm -hmm. throughout his whole mouth so you can imagine how much difference that created and um it 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 takes a lot. It takes a lot to see that because he was an incredibly handsome man. And, and of course, with that came health issues, not being able to eat, you know, you know food, it's all mush now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it messed up his brain. And so now he is in constant paranoia thinking that someone's after him some you know um this is happening like his world is now chaos and and coming from the small very small region that we're from yeah. comes judgment horrendous judgment and so he has become uh very he's become a recluse and and now just holds everything in himself therefore it leads to him doing not so good things so he's finding himself in more and more hot water and i'm very um i'm disappointed in a way i'm not mad i'm disappointed but there's also part of me that wants like feels like god i wish i could be home to help him get back on track um, right. because the direction that he's going to is not a good direction and that is frightening that is um, we do still like I'm the only one that he talks to he doesn't talk to anybody else right, right. but it's hard talking to him because he's out there so, can, you know, my heart goes out to you and your brother so i can just be me with him like a box you know and 
I'll mess with him or we'll fuck with each other. Uh, right. You know, just, just to help him uh, get back into reality again. And that's all I can do. That's all I can do. Wow. That's why I, that's why you're such a great person because you just find, you just take it, you take, you just take a burden upon yourself and you say, I'm going to help this person out because it's not because I have to, cause, not because I have to, because I want to, I want that, I want that person, you know, to know that you're not alone. You can, you can get the help. You can always talk to somebody and that's, yeah, that, 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 that as well. yeah. yeah. no, it, it, exactly. Um, because uh, no other family member is speaking to him. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to be that person. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Forgiveness, right? Forgiveness. And I, I think that's a, another really important thing that we need to understand. Um, I don't expect anyone to forgive me anymore. I am not pining for forgiveness. Uh, and I am also one to be right there and I will, I'm probably the most forgiving person ever, even to those who have attacked me right. on, on all levels. But, um, you know, the gentleman that did what he did to me up in Seattle, you notice I called him gentleman, right? Right, um, right. The most bizarre thing, now years have passed, okay, but the most mm -hmm. bizarre thing is now, now I can have a, con I actually have had a conversation with him. Wow, right? That's true, that's true forgiveness and resilience on your end. And, and it, um, and, and we've had a few now, but believe it or not, the initial contact was him contacting me because he was having concerns, a problem with his daughter who was 15, 16 years old. Right. And he turned to me. And I, I, I am more than happy to help. And that's where it was. That's where it is. So forgiveness is a very powerful thing. Oh, yes. You're, you are very right. Because I used to have issues with my brother. Like, me, like, to the point me and him weren't talking for almost a year and a half. But recently, times get, at the, me and him had a little argument here and there. Times have gotten a lot better. I'm able to talk to him more. And I'm able to let go of the hurts that we, we had against each other. Because at the end of the day, I realized that I like the people who bull, like people who bully me. People like the guy who like the guys who essentially assaulted me. Those who told me I wasn't going to make it made racial comments. I I can I can finally you know talk about it and not get angry about it, and not cry about it. Guy can say even though I went through all of that, I can say um thank you for putting me through all that because you just proved me. you you well you didn't you yeah you may have hurt me at this time but you proved myself that I'm able to you know rise up above all of that yeah. to make to make myself way better than I am. These people that, yes, you're gonna go through so much, but it doesn't. But it doesn't have to define you. And me being autistic made fun of. That made me more like, okay, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn all this. I'm gonna turn all these pains into power. Turn all these obstacles into a foundation for my empire. Turn all those who said that I wasn't gonna do that. Like I can forgive them for it. It it hurts. I can I can still remember what they said, but I can remember what they said to the point where. It can't hurt me no more because whenever I remember it, I just smirk at myself and say, yeah, I say, let's, let's play some games. And I just go do it. <laughs> and, and so, and so, and so myself, I say, every time when somebody, I think about what they said, like, all right, let's play some games. And I just go into doing it because, like, there's no point, there's no point in bringing myself down and, you know, doubt, doubt myself because of what someone said a long time ago. They, if they can forget about it, I can forget about it. Yes. And we all doubt ourselves at certain times in our lives. There's a lot of, you know, everyone has doubts. 
Um, but uh, hey, all of these feelings and experience that we have, they're there for a reason. Right. Because ultimately, it is teaching us how to survive. Right. And overcome. We, and, we, and we have definitely survived and overcome. And heal. Yes. My heart's healed. My, my emotional health is healed. Everything about me is healed. And I am ready to keep moving forward and helping others see that they can be healed. Yeah. Well, um, hey, I, I'd like to put a, uh, a word out there to you and to your friends. Um, when I get my land all situated and prepped, uh, that is going to be a home for everyone to come be immersed in nature and learn new things. And by, by all of that, um, you know, I want to create it as a healing place as well. You definitely don't find me there because I would love to share my story as I would love to hear stories from other people yeah. too because I learn a lot. Yeah. And if there's something I can put out is that, um, as I said before, um, you're not just beautiful on the outside. On the inside, you're a very beautiful and kind, caring person that who's looked out for others. And if you if you knew what you knew back then, what, if you knew back then uh, what you said would motivate others, like, would you, would you have said it still? Could you say that again so I get clarity? Sorry. Okay, like, um, when you talked to uh, um, Cassie, when you told uh, your, par your partner, uh, about, you know, like, hey, we're going to do this together, and then when you told her about, you know, how, like, you know, listen in, like, you know, gave her best advice possible, if you knew what you, if you, if you knew that 10 years later, you have somebody like me telling you that those words actually had a deep, profound uh, effect on, on my heart and on my soul, would you have said it still? Would you have said it back then? Oh, yeah. I mean, that that just, yeah. I mean, um, like, I, 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 I just really wanted to help her. Hey, look at it. My gosh, girl. You know, like, what is it? What? And and basically, you know, I, I think it came down to what her expectations were. Um, how she ended up on the show, I, I'm not quite sure, especially in season one, because it was, you know, it was the real deal. Right. It wasn't good. And certainly we were not helped in any form of matter, not compared to what it is today, sadly. Mm -hmm. I learned that when. And I did that show in the Philippines. Um, it's like, whoa, this is not the show I remember. So right. I won't be doing it again I'm at there. all. Not my scene, because as you know, you know, when you are in that situation, we can't be fighting against each other. And that's what I felt there. It was like, like we can't be going every day with this conflict is like where is this coming from and I was trying to be so patient and I was very whoa it was testing my patience and, and she did some horrible things to me um, and I was just like something something's going on I want it. I need to know who she is where is she coming from and, and I guess that's where the start of it was, was like, I wanted to know what it was that was making her like this. You know, yeah, you're patient like, like, I wasn't even judging her at all. Right. You know, in my mind, like, why, why, why is this happening? So, you know, like, when we are there judging other people, ask yourself, why are you making this judgment upon someone that you don't really know? You don't know them. You don't yeah. know what the situation is. You don't know their circumstances. You don't know how they grew up. 
you don't know their personal experiences. So we need to judge. And before we judge someone else, let's look into the mirror and say, well, who are you? You know. Yes. This is just I totally agree with that. Look in the mirror first. Right. And that's how I live. I, I mean, I judge myself. I, I know that if I'm, if I need to judge myself positively because if I want others to look at me in a positive manner, I got to look at myself first and say, yeah, you got this. You're the man. You got this. Today is your day. You know, and that's, how I, that's how I live. You know what I do? I, I, I can do this. All right. I have not tried this, but I've only got one mirror in this whole tiny little apartment. This is my apartment. Uh -huh. Those you know, right? Oh, and there's Carl Jung, as we spoke about. Yeah. <laughs> but um, looking in the mirror. So a lot of people just look into the mirror and they do this and they're doing their hair and, you know, whatever, right? But right. what I also do, and I don't know, I'm just not sure if you can read that, but I actually write a message to myself. And every now and then I change it. But this one here, it says, I feel like I'm the luckiest girl on this planet. My wealth is my joy teaching and seeing through the eyes of my children teach them well and be their guide for life i love it that is motivation for yourself and that's basically you said you basically setting out what you're going to do today and what you're going to do for the next you got what you're going to be doing I, lo I love it. It, it exactly so you know if if any of you are out there and you're just feeling this whatever and you feel like you're stuck Right? Write right. it down. Write it down. Put put those put those thoughts, those feelings down. And and also, you know, for me it's it's on the mirror because then I am forced to look at it, you know, every you know, every morning. Right. Or every time you go into the bathroom. I love it. And I'm a Sorry, I'm gonna start trying that with, with sticky notes, of course, because I don't have any uh, markers right on my mirrors. But I can I have sticky notes for sure. And I'll definitely get started on that. And plus, why I be posting on every day is also my reassurance as well and what I save. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've all and given it, a little bit of homework. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and before and before I let you go, uh, this is one thing I want. This is one thing I want to show you. Um, now, this is why I say to everybody, like, you know, not as romantic way, not, oh, we're lovers or because we're family, we're blood. But I say this to everybody because everybody needs to hear it at least once in their lives and they need to, uh, everybody deserves to hear it, because, whether, they, whether they want to or not. But this is what I wanted to show you. Ah. Uh, Dito. You know, how do people do it? No. How do they? I wouldn't. Oh, I'm a terrible heart maker. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I haven't done this in a long time. I haven't done this in a long time. Oh, I think yeah. it's right. No, it's something like that, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I love you too. Thank you. And uh, and if there's one, the last thing I want to tell you is that uh, I look forward to just, you know seeing that land and looking forward to just uh, watching you grow and just know I'm always here for you and. I really, truly appreciate you, what you've done for me today and what you're doing for us right now. Thank you. You know, uh, about the land, you know, I got that land. Mm -hmm. Not one time did I think, oh, that's, I bought that land for me. I know, I knew that I was buying that land for everyone. Um, so, and, and I've always said to myself, it's like, my gosh, if I ever become famous or, you know, full of wealth and whatnot, right. it's me. It would be me giving back, you know, to charities, for children, for animals and, you know, um, veterans and, and things like that. It's just, 
I, I'm that person, you know, it's just like, it's not about me. It's about what, what I can do for others. Hence, well, I got the land. So that's what I can do to give to others. I am so proud of that. And I, like I said, one of these days, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a point. I'm going to make a uh, trip out to California. Yeah. See you. I, I hope you do. I, well, hope I, really do. It's, I got, I got plans now. But now I got a job. I know I want to do vacations and all that. So I can't wait. Okay. All right. Well, peace. Thank you, thank you Mono. And thank you for everything you do. You're you have a blessed day. You too. You too. All right. Ciao.